Right, welcome back. So this one here, you may recognise. Yeah, I decided to MOT this one. So I've had it in for the test, and it's failed on. It's actually a good fail. So this is a good fail. Uh, you get good fails and bad fails. Uh, the good fails are ones that are nice and easy to sort. So for a car of this this age, and you know, I'm quite happy with that. So I've got windscreen wipers at the front. I've got a top mount bush and some rear brakes. So I've already got the parts for that. This should be a nice easy one. Yeah, but I'm going to go for the brakes first. So that's the video we're going to do today. And uh, we'll show you how to get these brakes done. The brakes on the, the Renaults and the Peugeots and uh, the general, the French in general, uh, the rear discs are usually quite expensive because uh, they incorporate the bearing in them, uh, the wheel bearing. So uh, we're just going to get this car jacked up and get the, the brakes done. So before I jack it up, what I've got to do is <coughs> I need to get these things out. Uh, you should be a little tool for taking them off, but in this instance it's, it's went missing. So what I do to get these off in this situation is a pair of long nose pliers and a set of footprints or could use a set of mole grips or something like that. What you do is put the things in a couple of the little holes and then you get your mole grips across the two blades here and then you use the mole grips to twist it off. I've already cracked this one already. Something a bit like that. Now that they are nicely removed. Just done myself to the lock nut. Luckily, I've got the lock locking key for this, so I'm just going to crack them off. I'm not going to remove them. Just just going to crack them, and get the, the the tightness off them. Um, and then I'm going to jack the car up. So before I go any further, because I'm going to be working on the rear brakes, I need the handbrake to be off. It's one of these electric handbrakes on this. So I pop the key card in. Uh, first things first, I want to put it in first gear, so put it in first gear so that'll lock the front wheels and stop the thing from rolling forward when I jack it up. Over here we've got the handbrake thing here. So some different vehicles have different ways of sort of releasing this, because sometimes you might release it and then when you take the key out or sort of open the door the, the thing will automatically lock. But let's see how we do it. I think you press this button in and pull it out at the same time. Let's see if we can hear the motor running. No, we can't. Put the brake in. Try it again. No, so let's see this. I'll start the car. Uh, oh, 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 gear. Start the car. Right, so let's figure this one out. So, can I just take it off? Just now, put my foot in the foot brake. I can hear the motor. And then let's see if I just turn the car off. The handbrake come back on. So, that didn't work. I'll try it again now, I've just still got the ignition lights on. Yeah, so, press the button in, go to that. Yep, that's released it. That's released it, the light's not on. And I'm in first gear, so I'm not going to go anywhere. I can just remove this key. And that's me, I'm ready. Oh, oh it's flashing now, it's okay. If it's flashing, it's, it's okay. If it's solid, it means that the handbrake's on. But that's flashing, so I'm happy with that. So I can get on with jacking this car up. So that's us jacked up both sides. You don't have to go crazy with it, you don't need a lot of space, so I'll just give it in a, maybe a few inches off the deck on both sides. So I'm just going to buzz these nuts off and get the wheel removed. Now that's the real wheel removed, and um, we can see these discs are looking a bit sorry for themselves. You can see from the spider's webs that it's been parked up a wee while before I came into possession of it. Let's have a look at this other side. Again, looks very sorry for itself. So, good time to change them. So, next thing I want to do is actually want to take this cap off both sides. So, there's a big hub nut in there that needs to be removed. So, if I get a little uh, screwdriver and a mallet, and I can just tap the corner of it and just try and lever that off. Now, screwdriver, just a little hammer, the first one that came to hand. I uh, managed to prise that out. And there we have it. So we've got a nice big bolt on here, I'm not quite sure what size it is at the moment, but we need to crack this off. That appears to be a 30mm, so use that, and I'll use my big breaker bar to 
crack that off. I don't need to take it right out at the moment, but I would just I'd be quite happy if I just crack it, um, so that I can able just to re remove it a lot easier. So that's that not been cracked, and if I put my ratchet on it, I'll show you. There we go. So that's not going to give me any trouble in this at all. So the next thing I'm going to go for is I'm going to remove this caliper. So there's two bolts on it, top and bottom. I think they're maybe 13s, um, but I'll get on them. And these bolts are indeed 13 mil. So what I do, rather than put pressure on that and then when it cracks, it suddenly sort of gives a jolt. You end up punching things that you don't want me to punch. What I do to crack these kind of things off um, is put a spanner on it and if you put a bit of light pressure in the direction you want it to turn you get a mallet and just give it a couple of little taps and it should crack. Um, I've kind of got into the habit of doing that way just about every time I've got to use a spanner on something um, but it definitely saves your knuckles from getting scratched and scuffed up. So Now these ones I've just cracked off just using the mallet technique, but if you watch this bit here, that's turning as well. So what I need to do is get a 15 mil, put it on here, and hold that while I loosen that off. Now those two bolts are out, top and bottom. It's just a case of taking the caliper off, but sometimes it needs a little bit of persuasion with the hammer eh, or a pry bar or something just to get it out. And that's it off, so I'll just place that up there just now and turn my attention to the bolts at the back. Yeah, this one and this one. Now these two bolts at the back are an E16, which is a reverse torx, a female torx. But if you don't have reverse torx, sometimes you can actually put a standard socket on that, maybe a 13mm or something like that. Um, but these bolts are going to be really tight and stuck in there, so ideally you want to have this correct tool for the job to save stripping it. Right. You could get a breaker bar in there, but it's quite awkward because of the bumper that's sitting here. So what I'm just going to do is get my ratchet, put it on there, and then I've got like a metal bar. Just slide over it like so, and then that'll allow me to crack these off. And with those two bolts removed, this should just come away in your hand. So, now we've got the brake pads carrier, so we'll put that aside just now. So, we need to loosen off this nut all the way, and then hopefully, this should this whole disc complete with the wheel bearing, and there's an ABS pickup behind it as well. That should all come away with one piece. That nut fully removed, this whole thing should come away complete. Now we have the wheel bearing in the middle, this black outer ring's a ABS pickup ring. That's why these things are so expensive because you're actually buying oh, two parts in one, but technically three. Yeah, and you've got the brake disc, the bearing, and then the pickup ring. So, what I'm going to do is just give this a little clean up. And then we can start the rebuild procedure. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wind back this piston. So what I've got to do is this piston sitting here, it's got to be wound all the way back in until it's basically flush with the, the case in there. So there's a special tool required for doing this. Kind of looks a bit like that. Um, as you can see, notches on the little piston. You basically find a tool, and you see they're all different sort of spaces and stuff like that. You find a, a tool that fits onto that piston, and then you rig up your your wind back tool. I'll show you that in a wee second. So I found one that kind of fits reasonably well. So I'll get this and put it on this one. As you can see, this one's all bent because this one sort of takes a bit more punishment than the other. Uh, these things, ones are right handed thread and the other one's a left handed thread so most cars have the same sort of right handed thread but occasionally you will get a left handed thread so um, hence the reason why that's there but this one certainly gets used more than others so I'll try this one first a little magnet on the bottom of it which basically sticks that on there and then I've got like a little backing plate that slides over the top 
so it's difficult to do things with one hand there we go so that goes over like that so what you would do is you would engage these pins where is it where yeah in that piston engage the pins in the piston and then tighten up this bit here until it's nice and snug against the rest of the caliper but i'll show you that in a sec so there we have i've wound up back up so it's nice this plate's nice and snug so what essentially this tool's doing is at the same time as turning it's also pushing because it's got to be that sort of push and turn at the same time so when i turn this bit at the end it tightens up the screwed rod end of it which then turns the piston and pushes it in so these things can either be really difficult like stuck hence the reason why this bar is all bent or they can just go in with finger type stuff so we'll find out in a second how easy this one goes in and that's that being wound all the way in pushed all the way home and just keep going till it doesn't go any further and it should sit flush with this rubber boot in here so now that I'm happy with that I can just take the tool out so in a new box got my disc also got a little uh, new cap and a new hub nut so that's good yeah, I'm just going to use that so just when you're handling this, be very careful, there is a plastic cover over this ABS ring but you need to be really careful you don't damage this, hence the reason why I'm sitting it upside down to just to show you because um, this has got a, made a, a kind of rubber on the top of it, if you damage that then you're going to have ABS problems and all sorts of annoying things like that so don't, do, don't be silly and just uh, be very gentle with this pickup ring on this side so the first thing I'm going to do is basically put the old one and the new one kind of side by side so I'll just sat them up like that and put my hand across the top of them I don't want to get them too close obviously because of the ABS sensor in here but I'm pretty confident that all these things look the same on both sides so I'm pretty confident this is the correct part so I can go ahead and put it on now I've removed that plastic cap and you can get a better look at this little ABS pickup ring with a kind of rubber coating on it so just be careful when you're offering it up to a little stub axle make sure you, you don't hit this you don't damage it at all so just be very careful when you're putting it on that just slid on beautifully so I'm going to put the new nut on here right. now I've tightened this by hand just so that it's not wobbling about and I can assemble the rest of the brakes but it's very important that I top that at the end so I'm not going to put the cap on because if that's off it will remind me that it's not been torqued so I'll leave the cap off until I know that everything else is all back together and the last thing I'll do is top that up so now I can turn my attention to this brake carrier and start clearing that up so these pads are just sitting there so they should just come out if you don't just give them a little whack that one come out no problem this one there we go so what I'm wanting to do is I basically want to clean up all these mating surfaces there's little metal shims on this one so I can just remove them just um, careful we don't damage them. I'm going to put a screwdriver I think onto that. So I'll pop them off. So I've got a little screwdriver and just levered underneath this front section of it. Pop them off. Uh, it's, it's a good idea to do this because some people don't. You just, just kind of clean it up as it is. But what happens is you get a build up of kind of corrosion just underneath where those little shims sit. So it's a good idea to take them apart. A wire brush on there and even a screwdriver just to clean up any sort of loose um, rust and junk that's in there so that's what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get a wire brush and give this a right good clean up something like that's just fine so I'll just get the screwdriver and give it a wee scratch in all the little nooks and crannies here um, also down the middle where the clip shows again where, where the clip goes in did a wee clean in there, um, but I'm happy with that. Now we just need to fit this back onto the car. Now that's been tightened up. Yeah, I did the same way. I put the ratchet on it and then put my extension bar on the end of it and just gave it a little nip up. So there will be a torque setting on all these bolts, but um, experience yeah, kind of tells you how tight it should be. But really, just want to make it tight enough that it's never going to come off on its own. Um, if you're in any doubt as to whether it's tight enough, please just uh, look up the torque setting on it. So I'm going to turn myself to these pins. Uh, 
they actually feel really good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave them as they are. I'm not going to grease them. If they were stiff or um, no stuck or anything like that, you just pull them straight out. I'll just show you. So you pull them straight out, and what you can do is clean up that pin and re-grease it and put it back in. But these pins are absolutely perfect, so I'm not actually going to do that. I'm just going to leave them as they are. So what I need to do now is clean up these little shims. Um, again, they don't have to be 100% perfect, but the cleaner you can get them, the better, uh, particularly on the mating surfaces. So I'm just going to get a little tiny wire brush that looks like a toothbrush, um, and I'm going to use a wee clean. Something like this I would recommend getting your hands on. It's very good to get into all the other little nooks and crannies of brakes. As you can see, but this one is, um, you know, past its best. I need to be getting a few more of these. Something like that will do the trick. Shinier the better, but the main thing is they're nice and smooth. You've not got any sort of rough areas on it, so I'm pretty happy with that. Ready to put them back in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a smear of grease all over these sort of mating surfaces here, a little anywhere where the shim is going to be touching. The reason for that is we've all heard uh, a car when you apply the brakes, you hear a squealing sound. Um, all sounds are actually vibrations, so by putting a little blob of grease between the metal and metal, you dampen any vibration and therefore dampen any sound. So I like to put a little blob in between before I put these in. Something like that. Um, maybe it's a wee bit too much, but it's not going to do any harm. I did get a little bit on the disc, but I can clean that off later at the end. So. What I'm going to do is click these little shims back in, just like that. So I had to use a screwdriver a wee bit just to make sure that that was sort of seated in properly there and wasn't going to fill on that disc, so I'm quite happy with that. So I just need to go and get the pads and dry fit them and see how they, well they fit. That's the new pads out of the, the box. So one thing you need to note is have a look to see if there is an inside pad and an outside pad. The way you can tell is you've maybe got an extra couple of pins or something, so you've got two pads of one pattern and two pads of another. But these here all look identical, so that tells me it doesn't matter which way they go in. So now that I'm happy with that, I just get one of the old pads before I take it out of the packet uh, and place it over the top. Make sure it's the right shape, right size, and I'm very happy with that so I can take these out of the packet and see how they fit. So, like I say, I've dry fitted them at the moment, i.e. I've not put any grease on the pad. But this one on this side feels perfect. You want it to be snug but not tight. So that feels good. This one just feels a little bit tight. The reason for that is, is these carriers uh, get old and corroded. And when metal rusts, it actually expands. So... This one here is probably half a millimetre of expansion, which doesn't give it enough, quite enough space in there. So what I'm going to do with this one here is I'm just going to get the file and just file off the paint, just off the very edge of this bit here, top and bottom, and then try it again until I'm happy that it's not stiff. And that feels a lot better now. Snug. But not tight, it's not going to seize up or stick or anything like that. And all I did was literally just take a little bit of the paint off top and bottom, and that's all it takes to make it fit perfectly. So now that I'm happy with that, I can just put some grease on the mating surfaces here and here, and a little bit on the back. I'll show you that in a second. So, a wee bit more grease on there, and grease at the top. Grease at the bottom and grease at the back. Looks a bit messy, but the reason for that is I actually used a little so paintbrush, which a lot a lot of people do it that way. A lot of mechanics will use a little brush to put it on, but I've never done it. I've always just used my little finger. So I normally get my my little finger and dip it in, do what I've got to do, and then just clean it off. But my mate was in here the other day and he used one of these wee brushes, so just want to try it. Still, I need to do a bit more practice with that brush, but um, at the end of the day, that should be fine as long as you've got no uh, grease on the mating surface, that's fine. So, I'll just pop that one in and do the same with another one. 
something like that. So all I need to do now, now that I'm happy that these are fitted, I need to put the caliper back on and put the two bolts in it. So there's two bolts put back on, top and bottom. I had to use a 15mm again on this little so a nut bit here um, just to stop them from spinning until I got that tightened up. So these don't need to be crazy tight, they're only little bolts, so they're just a little nip. Good strong nip is all they require. Yeah, don't go crazy with them. So that's this one done. What I'm going to do now is this here, I'm going to put the breaker bar on it and give it a good tighten up. Again, there will be a torque setting if you look it up. Um, but I've done that many of them, I know how it feels. So I'm pretty confident I can get that with a breaker bar and it'll be absolutely fine. So once I've torqued it up, I can put the cap back on it. So that's been torqued up and I put the new cap on. So when you get a new cap, sometimes it's really tight to try and get it on. <clears throat> if you're struggling with it, you can just reuse the old cap. So all it is is a dust cover just to stop you know, dirt and crap and salt and stuff like that get in there. But what I do, you need to give it a good whack just to get it started off. If you had it in the middle, you end up just denting it inwards. Um, so what I generally do, I've got a, a ball joint socket, I think it's a 46mm, something like that. So I shall put it like that, and give it a couple of good whacks with a hammer, and that gets it started off. Um, then I just get my hammer and work my way around it, like that, until it's flush. But if you're really struggling with it, you can just put the old one back in, because the old one will go in a wee bit easier than a, than a new one. Um, so don't worry, but as long as you get something on it just to protect it, it's absolutely fine. So this side's a bit done. I'm quite happy with that. Everything's all back in. Um, so I just need to pop this wheel back on and move on to the other side. So that's everything all done. And the wheel's back on. That little clip back in. So anything you're working on brakes. Yep. Anything <laughs> you're working on brakes, um, the very last thing you want to do is pump the pedal. Because what this does is it resets the pistons that you've just had to wind back. So pump the pedal. First couple of times it'll go to the floor. And once you're happy that that's done, you can then take it for a test drive. So that's how you change the rear brakes on a Renault Scenic. Uh, if you like what you see, don't forget to. Like, comment and subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.